having faith in the universal energies to heal can be really, really difficult. In today's episode, I'm going to give you several different ways to help promote that healing and have a little bit more faith in nature's power. Let's go get that nugget. Welcome, ladies, to the Life Mastery for Women podcast. I'm Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind, your host. This is where we go to learn to master our life one nugget at a time. I remember when my back was basically in pain in some degree, some level, some variation for about five years straight. And it became worse and worse. And I would have different bouts where my muscles in my back would seize up, leaving me flat on my back wherever it happened for sometimes days. Not staying in the same place. I could like sort of maybe get up, but I would definitely need help. I could hardly walk on my own. I was in and out of the hospital. I did a bunch of PT exercises and met with different PTs. I had an MRI. I had, ex- I had x-rays. I had medication. Nothing seemed to help. And I'm a very active person. And I love to move and, and run around. And I love being a part of sports. Like I did triathlons and hiking, biking kayaking, rock climbing, all kinds of stuff. Well, if you've ever had back pain, you're pretty limited with any kind of movement that you do. And it was uh, quite annoying. Not only was it annoying to happen once, but it happened several times in this five-year period. Well, I remember being quite annoyed, complaining about it, using it as a crutch, if you will, and going, well, no, I, I can't go do that thing because my back might go out. Oh, I can't really help you with that or go over here or do this thing because of my back. It was like this ongoing little flag that was like waving in my face. And it was really annoying. And the days that my back would feel good, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go run around in the backyard. Like it's beautiful. It's nice. It's, I'm gonna go on a, and then my back would hurt the next day. And so then I like stopped doing those things. And those things brought me joy and those things made me feel alive and I felt like I couldn't do it. And I remember thinking and going to different uh, PTs or different doctors and trying different medications. And, you know, you've heard my podcast. I'm not one for like living my life on medication, but there were times where I'm like, I'll try it and see what happens. And it just didn't work. So I needed to go deeper because those things that I was attempting wasn't working and I needed something to work. I needed to get my life back. And I'm telling you, no matter where you are right now, you can get your life back. And today we're going to talk about how not only the, the, the tricks and things that I did to get me back in gear where now I'm outside of that realm of fear as it relates to my back, like it doesn't hurt anymore, like ever. And I didn't have surgery. I'm not on medication, but I did do some things and I did um, go inward to work with the nature's power of healing. And I want to share that with you today. So that was the thing I did, but also getting out of that fear. There were things that physically that I did, but there were also things that I did internally. That is where the power began, is the internal shift that I made. So no matter where you are in your journey, just have a little bit of faith that you can get to where maybe where I am, meaning that you don't have pain in your body. Because I don't know about you, but it was, it was not only debilitating pain, but it really put a halt on me having joy in my life. So when I was in this pain, I remember thinking, <laughs> as I always think, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a way out of this. There have been people that have been in pain that have not been in pain. There have been people who have had different diseases that were incurable that are now living their life without that disease. I want to heal my back. That was the very first thing is making the decision to go with and to work with nature's healing ability to go with nature's healing, (laughs) not against don't, uh, don't, um, don't force it. Don't complain about it. Don't go out there seeking it. Go with nature's ability to heal. You get a paper cut, you clean it, maybe you put a band-aid, some some ointment and you you walk away. You don't think about it again. You hardly talk about it and you know 3 days later the thing is gone, right? The body has a natural way to heal itself. It has a natural way to protect itself. When I dove deeper into my back 
And I did have MRIs done, so there's nothing going on with my spine that would be causing that great of pain that I was having. Like, I would walk into my PT to do uh, exercises with him, and I'm, like, completely crooked. Not only is one shoulder, like, four inches taller than the other, but I was also twisted at the waist. So it felt muscular to me, but he's like, oh, I think it's your spine. And immediately, intuitively, I'm like, no. And he's like, I think you might have a ruptured disc. And I'm like, no, I don't. And he kind of laughs at me. I said, no, I don't. I said, I'm very tuned into my body. And I said, and you asking that question intuitively, the answer is no. And he said, well, I'm going to order an MRI anyway. I'm like, okay, (laughs) go ahead. We'll order an MRI. And I had an MRI done. I bring it over. I bring in the results. Next time I see him, he's like, okay, so you were right. Anyway, let's move on from that, right? And so part of that was the awareness happening. But the part in within all of these exercises that I was doing, there was still a piece that was missing, there was a piece that that lessened my confidence in them because what I was doing with him for I was like almost nine months. It was the it was a, I think I started like a month after COVID started and then ran for almost a year, and it wasn't helping. I was still having flare ups. I was still the muscle was still seizing up, and uh, so here's what I did. I decided I'm gonna I'm gonna figure this out. I want to figure this out. And what I did is I went into the pain. So I laid on my back. It was kind of in pain, but it wasn't like a seized up moment. So I could still get up and move, but it was still kind of tender. And I remember I'm going into the pain and I'm like, okay, I need to work with you. I want to know what's causing this. And immediately I got the word flexibility. So I'm like, okay, so flexibility And then, of course, if you listen to my other podcast, you know that I was a personal trainer for years. I was in the fitness field for like 22 years. I'm like, all right. So I started I started researching all different types of like how all the muscles work together to support the back. One of those muscles were the hamstrings. If the hamstrings are tight, then it pulls the pelvis down, flattening the back, which is that's exactly how I stand is my back is flat and my pelvis is tilted forward. And so I'm like, okay, that's something. I'm going to start uh, adding flexibility to my workout for my hamstrings. Well, if you know your hamstrings, it's the back of your upper thigh. And I could not bend over without having an immense amount of fear that something was going to happen, that my back was going to lock up. And so I'm like, how am I, how am I going to add flexibility to my hamstrings if I can't do that. So what I was doing is standing in the bedroom and we have a very high bed. It's it's a king size bed, very thick mattress, like 18 inches or something. And then it's on a platform. Like the dogs can sleep underneath the bed. They don't always sleep. They have beds under there. They do, but then they mostly sleep on the bed. Don't judge me. <laughs> anyway, so what I would do is I would lift up one of my legs and I would straighten it out on the bed. So I'm almost looking like I'm trying to do the splits, but I have one leg on the bed and the other one's on the floor. And I'm stretching my hamstring. I'm like, ah, that feels really good. And I would hold the stretch for long periods of time, 20 or 30 seconds. And then I would switch legs. And I would do it again. I do it probably three or four times. You guys, over the course of, of about, I don't know, three weeks of doing this several times, really being focused, the pain went away for like the very first time in five years. I now like get up in the morning and it's not stiff. And it's not feeling like it's like it's like something's like touching it, you know, with that kind of like it's just annoying. And if I move too much or go too fast that it could grab is what I would say. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if this makes sense to you, but it was annoying nonetheless. And it was I my awareness was always on it so much so that I was creating this fear around it that I have to make all my decisions based on how my back was feeling. So anyway, so about three weeks later, I don't have any pain. I'm like, okay, that's day one. I'm not going to go run a marathon. But man, my mood was lifted. Like I felt amazing. And then I kept doing it. I kept doing it. I kept doing it. And three weeks now leads into six weeks, eight weeks, three months, no back pain, no more back pain. And then I was outside. I think I, I don't know if I missed a couple or whatever, but all of a sudden my back seized up. Now, typically when it would, when it would seize up, I'd be down and out for at least a week, seven, eight, you know, eight, nine days where I'm really, really babying it and really trying. I can't walk. Amy has to come and help me. She has to help with the dog. She's taking time off work. It's really, really difficult. This day I was going to go sit back outside and in the Adirondack chair. And so I was like leaning back and getting into the Adirondack chair 
And I'm like, oh, it grabbed out of nowhere, right? I'm like, oh man, I'm not out of the woods, right? And so I like really crookedly, you know, gingerly walk myself up into the house and into the bedroom and lay on the bed. Amy had to come home. She had to help, but we didn't go to the hospital. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do the work. Now this was Thursday. This was Thursday morning. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to, you know, I didn't throw a fit. I didn't complain. I didn't, I'm just like, okay, let's do it. I went inward. I went right with the pain. And here's what I did. I started imagining that I was still doing the flexibility training, that I was still straight, that I was still adding the flexibility in my hamstrings and visualizing it as if I was doing it. And it was feeling so good. And then I was doing a little bit of like, as I'm laying on my back, I'm kind of like rotating my, my hips and um, my pelvis, like tilting it back and then relaxing and tilting. I was doing a bunch of guided meditations for healing. I was going into the pain. I was releasing the pain. I was breathing deeply. I was really focused on it. And then I was like thanking just nature's power, just thanking source energy that I, it had been three months of free of back pain. Now this was Thursday and all day Thursday I'm on my back. All day Friday I'm on my back. I'm up a teeny tiny bit in the evening. I'm like I'm I'm going to start walking up and down, you know, through the house a little bit and kind of loosen it up and and uh drinking more water and I'm going to the bathroom on my own, you know, meaning I just don't need anybody to hold to help me um like get into the bathroom or or anything like that. By Saturday I was probably at 80%. Now, none of the times has my back seized up where it was that short period of time like that, where it's only like practically, I don't know, a day and a half, two days. It was crazy. And that was this this past summer, 2023. I don't know. I'd have to look at my thing because I had a coaching client that I, that I canceled that morning. And so I know that it was a Thursday morning because I only coach him on Thursdays. And um, it was in the summer because I remember being outside and I remember being Saturday because Amy was home. And it was like, it was amazing. So I did say the steps in there, but let me reiterate to you. The very first thing I did is I went inward and started to work with the healing powers. I went into my pain. I'm releasing the pain. You can say things like that. I'm ready to let you go. I'm releasing this pain from my body. Asking, getting in touch with the pain and asking what is going to help to heal this pain. What is going to help me heal from this? Now, you might not, if you're not intuitive yet, like you just have the, the, the channel of communication just isn't opened, it's okay. It will open. So keep asking. And there's lots of ways that I've connected to my intuition. I have lots of podcasts about um, increasing the power of your intuition and connecting to your intuition where there's different things that you can do that help you to get those answers. It is worth it. It's your body. You need to be able to tap in and and get healing messages that you need. Like I like I don't know where I would be if I didn't get that message about needing the flexibility. Now I know I'm a personal trainer, but there's just certain elements of things I just didn't think about, and that was one of them. So going inward, getting in touch with your intuition and asking what is going to help me heal from this. As you go into the pain, don't go in there with a negative attitude. I know you might be dealing with pain for a long time and it sucks and it limits your body and limits your range of motion. You might be believing, oh, it's just old age. It's just this. It's this accident I had when I was a kid. It's the surgery that I had. The doctors can't figure it out. I'm on all this medication. I'm just never going to. Don't do that. Because that's limiting you where the body wants to heal. The body wants to expand and you're going, eh, no, it's fine. You know, I'll just take more medication. I'll just go see another doctor. I'll just, you know, figure it out. Let the natural healing abilities happen. And we do that by being open, by being open. I want to figure this out. I'm going to figure this out. I made a decision. I went inward. I made a decision. I tapped into my intuition and said, listen, what's this going to take? And it is. I'm out of the fear element. And that's a great place to be. The next is to practice that mindfulness. Like, don't forget to do whatever it is intuitively that you got. Now, I did go get all the tests. I did try medications, like I said. I did try personal or uh, physical therapy. I did the exercises. I went to different doctors. I did all that. I had an MRI, an x-ray. So make sure, make sure, you know, tap into your intuition to get different answers. But please make sure that you are seeing a doctor and you are going in and getting experts to to figure things out if they can. Like, I don't want to give you these kind of exercises and you do have a blown disc and now you're paralyzed because you did these exercises. Like, that's not my gig. But I want you to get as many answers as you can and then get in alignment 
with the healing practice. Getting into alignment with how the body heals is much, much better than going against it. You go against it, it's never going to work. It's never going to heal. So then after that is watching your thoughts about the pain. Do you constantly talk about it still? Are you constantly keeping? Remember what we, what we resist persists. So if I'm still continuing to talk about my back in a negative way, I am keeping that momentum of that thing. So try to change how you talk about your pain. Do you talk about anybody who will listen as soon as they say, hi, how are you? You're like, oh, and then I've got this pain and this thing. And then I went to this doctor and I tried this medication, none of which is you just keep going. You're going to stay in that story. So you got to change the story. And the last is gratitude, is being grateful for the healing potential, being grateful for your intuitive mindset that you can get in there and get answers being grateful that the healing is on its way to you. So start with being open. I'm open to healing. I'm open to working with the natural healing powers of the world. I'm open to releasing this. I'm letting this pain go. I don't need this anymore. Is there a message that I need to get from this pain? And if all of those things are in alignment, I guarantee you, your healing is on its way. Picture yourself healed visualize what would you do if you didn't have this pain or this ailment? What would your life be like? How would you talk? How would you be with your family? What things would you go and do? I really loved the fear was gone. I was out of the fear cloud. That's the biggest thing that I talk about is that is not living in that fear state that, oh, I can't go do that thing because of my back. Or I, you know, there are times I'm taking the dogs for a walk to the park and I didn't want to go because I was afraid that if Juju pulled me just one way or something that something, and I'm laying down in the park and, you know, a, 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 a few minutes away from the house, you know what I mean? And so being grateful is huge. Not only does gratitude raise your vibration, but it puts you in a healing state and that allows you to work with nature's energy. Now, If you are interested in healing, if you are in pain, if there's blocked energy, it is showing up physically and emotionally in your body. We have retreat coming up at the end of the month, and I would love for you to check it out and see if it's something that aligns with you, because we are going to be talking about how to overcome the emotional pain and physical pain when our chakras are blocked and when our energy is blocked and ways that we can release that. And we're going to work and we're and you're going to bring something to the retreat to release. And people have walked away going, oh my gosh, I have full range in my shoulder. Oh my gosh, I'm standing up straight. Oh my gosh, my headache is gone that I've had for six years. Like those are huge. That's what I do. I help you to move that energy out, getting you to a place of higher vibration so healing can take place. If you're interested, check out the link in the show notes. Otherwise, I hope you just keep getting into alignment and keep looking for those nuggets. I'll see you next time. As we conclude today's episode, I'm thrilled to share something special with you, our Rise Up and Revitalize virtual retreat. Imagine a transformative experience designed to elevate your mind, body, and spirit. It's not just a retreat, it's an invitation to rediscover your potential. Are you curious? Join us for a journey of renewal and empowerment. Visit the link that I added in the show notes to learn more and embark on the next journey of your vibrant life. Until next time, keep looking for those nuggets.